Welcome into ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. Coming up on today's show, exactly how loyal is DeJounte Murray? And another day, another writer weighs in on the Falcons' postseason hopes. But what happens if those hopes don't hinge on the run game? And last but not least, and for the culture, Ant-Man said, no, sir, not me. This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. I want to start by saying thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. Remember, we are free and available whatever you download your podcast. And wherever you download your podcast, make sure that you leave us a five-star review. Really appreciate that from you in advance. Today's episode of ATL Day Ones is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make it every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. But coming up in five minutes, I'm going to tell you exactly what the secret sauce is for the Atlanta Braves. But first, we have to talk about DeJounte Murray T. We all, we, the conversations have been flying around, the rumors, all that stuff with the Toronto Raptors and other teams have been, his name is involved in other conversations about potentially being traded from the Atlanta Hawks. But there are reports that Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, who's a guy who's a super tapped in guy when it comes to being an NBA insider, he said that the feeling around the league is that DeJounte Murray is going to re-sign with the Atlanta Hawks. Now, let me tell you the significance of that. And I definitely want to get your thoughts on this. If he's the max the Hawks can under the new CBA, the max the Hawks can sign him for is four years and $111 million, which is roughly about $27.7 million, $28 million a year. And that's the max they can offer him. But if he waits till next summer, T, he can earn up to five years, 260. So is DeJounte Murray that loyal? For his sake, from a business perspective, I would hope not. And I say that as someone who <laughs> covers the Hawks yeah. and would, you know, if you cover a team, of course you want to see them be successful. That's just good for business. But what's good for business for DeJounte Murray is to get his money. And now don't get me wrong. He literally may have to decide on whether or not it's money with a contender or just money, period. So there's yeah. that. And I think that's something where he has to say, okay, am I betting on myself, right? Yeah. To just wait mm -hmm. till next summer and just kind of see what's what. Because I would think when you're talking about 25 mil, because he's at 16 right now. Yeah. And then if you're talking about going to 25 mil, but then you're talking about, if I'm doing quick math, five years, 26, 260 million. Yeah, yeah. that 50 mil? Yeah, about, Over yeah, 50 about 50 million. Yeah, 50 million. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> you can double, more than double your earnings. Yeah. It would be very, very difficult for anybody to say no, regardless of how loyal they are. So, yeah, that's a tough one for me. I, I would understand it. I mean, I would respect if he decided, hey, this is a team I feel like I can get to a championship with, and the championship means more, and I can always find other ways to get the money, whether that's through endorsements or whether that's getting a chip and then going out and getting your money like a Bruce Brown. Right. So right. you I mean, there are ways to do it if loyalty is the number one thing to you. But I think too, you have to be smart about what's in front of you. And that's really, really tough when you look at what the Hawks would potentially be able to offer him this summer versus what he'd be virtually guaranteed for next summer. And nine times out of 10, if the Hawks keep him for the duration of this year, because, hey, there's trade deadline and that might be a possibility for the Hawks to trade him or anybody else as well. But if they keep him this entire year and he gets a full year under Quinn Snyder, then his numbers go up. Then he can really go out there and command exactly what's at the top of the market at the shooting guard at the two. So, And, and I think that, you know. The reason why I framed the question is because he tweeted out last night. I don't play about loyalty now. I get that aspect of it too, but I think at some point you got to be loyal to yourself, like you, like right. you mentioned. And if he's going to bet on himself, you got to look at it from a standpoint, this standpoint too, right? Is he going to be looked at as a max player? Yeah. 
under the guise of Trey, because Trey is the dude, right? That I think that's pretty much established. Like Trey is going to be the this offense is going to center around Trey Young, and he's going to be a, a, a an excellent Batman. I mean, excuse me, um, Robin or a Batman A or or a Batman B, whatever you want to how you want to frame it. But at the end of the day, Trey is going to be the number one guy in this offense under in, in Quinn Snyder's system. So I think that it kind of you have to weigh it out, right? Do you do you say like you say? Do you go ahead and bet on yourself and, and, and at least experience and see what happens, or do you say, you know what? Here's where I am in my career. I know I feel I buy. I'm buying into a Quinn Snyder system. I really feel like I can be a contender. And 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 if this is being brutally honest with yourself, and I don't feel like I'm gonna get that 260 million dollar contract. I might need at least have a conversation as to an extension. And it, it looks like that's what's going, that's what's going down at this point. And we'll keep an eye on as if this thing ends up turning out how you know some of the uh some of the uh, um general managers around the league feel like it's going to, and they feel like that the Hawks are going to get an extension done and not and I'll be like I said, but I'll still be shocked if they get it done before and next I'll, summer. T. I'll play a little devil's advocate with you as well. You know, people use social media to sometimes send cryptic messages that mean the opposite of what you think. So the flip side of that might be he's saying that, hey, I'm loyal to a fault, but that might be also pointing a finger to the hog saying they ain't loyal because mm -hmm. you never know what offer they put on the table for him that makes yeah. him feel like, okay, you're not valuing my worth, right? Yeah. Whether you're talking about my worth this summer, next summer or beyond. So I'm interested also to see whether or not that might be what it comes out to be, that there was an offer put on the table, he didn't feel like it was worthy of what he wanted, and therefore, where's the loyalty really from the Hawks standpoint? Again, just devil's advocate about sometimes these messages on social media from these players are so cryptic that you literally, can go, they can go any direction, including the two we just mentioned, and a, a direction that neither of us have even figured out. No, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. We we're still trying to figure this 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 thing out and where the Hawks are headed as we go along. Now, what one team that we don't have to figure out anything, we know where they're headed. They're more than likely head to the World Series. T definitely guarantee the playoff spot at this point, you know, halfway through as we go into the all-star break. Braves get the dub last night. Um, eight to one against the Cleveland Guardians, their 10th straight um series win t that's absolutely ridiculous and also um brian snicker gets his 600th win as the Braves skipper so yeah just a lot of good things going on last night but i think the main thing that has stood out to me t throughout this entire time like we'll talk about we've been talking about it until those guys actually come back max free and uh, kyle wright i feel like the sauce the secret sauce is them just going out there and just bashing folks each and every night and they're doing it early and often and they got off to a great start last night in their first inning with michael soroka on the mound yeah michael soroka had a solid night you know, four and two-thirds innings you get four strikeouts that's a good look and then you bring in michael tonkin who yes. is maybe really one good. of those understated heroes of this team because three and a third innings last night allows a couple with the day off that the Braves have that stretches the pitching rotation and that stretches that entire pitching staff for Brian Snickers. So what they were able to do collectively Soroka and Tonkin is also critical for what we saw last night, but you're right with Michael Soroka being his uh, in his second start since his mm -hmm. return uh, from going down to triple a you do want to give him some confidence and let him know, hey, we got you. We're going to give you the runs. We're going to have run production production that you need. What I also liked about the run production last night was this, two things. Number one, they were one guy short of going through the entire order in one inning. One frame. That's amazing. Yeah. And number two, we give the Braves so many accolades. I believe it's 166 runs at this point, uh, home runs, if you will to uh, or 166 runs minnesota twins actually had that from about four years ago but the braves still have three games left so they may break that record for runs you get to the all-star break my point being we always talk about them having their home runs and they now have five players with 15 or more home runs but yesterday they showed you they could do it with just runs period just getting on yeah. base because those four runs in the first inning came with zero home runs so i thought that was also a good look for them last night to just show how they can put a game plan together and not just be about hitting for power, but to actually be strategic about how you're going to move from base to base and get runs. 
Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that you know, because Michael Soroka, like you said, he's the type of guy that needs that comfort, right? The, the, the those early runs, they got four runs in the first inning, and you know, Michael Soroka had guys at least two guys left on base yeah. for four consecutive innings. So those are some of the things that you like, okay. And he was able to figure out, figure out that thing. Like, you know, like I said, you, you want to see a little bit more clean of a game from sure. him, but like when you get, he gets himself into those situations, you appreciate the fact that he's able to get out of those situations. So, and especially with the, the type of lineup that the guardians have, like they aren't all that pop. They don't have that much pop in their lineup, you know, so to speak, but, like you said, we've been able to see some things from them that hey, let, let, let you know that they can take advantage of mistakes made. So to see uh, Soroka be able to get themselves out of those particular situations, I thought it was a, a cool sight to see. And, you know, hopefully that, that progression continues with Michael Soroka as we move along. And, and also another give another quick congratulations to Brian Snicker for his 600th win as yeah, the Braves skipper. Like it is, it is so so cool just to kind of see how his story has turned out. Like, yeah, you believe in America when you look at Brian Snicker T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. UNO product, University of New Orleans. Shout out to Snit. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. University of New Orleans. They didn't even know that existed. It does. I learn something new every day. Yes. Got any sports teams? Yeah, they do. Privateers oh, okay. have a, actually pretty much everything but football. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. That's probably why it doesn't exist in my world. <laughs> but coming up next, the Atlanta Falcons. Arthur Smith is all about the run game, right? They were one of the best teams in the in uh, NFL last year. They're trying to be that again, and they doubled down on that bad boy by drafting B. John Robinson. But will that get them to the playoffs? We'll discuss that next. But first, I have to let you know that – this episode of ATL Day Ones is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook because it is the number one sportsbook in America. Guess what? You can take your first swing on, on betting on Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. Yes, you get your first your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think going to hit the first home run. We just got through talking about the Braves. They hitting home runs every night. So guess what? Go on the fan duel right now and get yourself some money because stop playing around get some money. And then they'll pay your bets back right there. You don't have to worry about them calling them, hey, where's my money? You know, I need my money. You don't got to worry about that. You're going to get your money instantly as soon as that bad boy clears. So there's no better place to bet on MLB than fan duel sportsbook number one sports book in america so sign up today at fanduel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel official sports betting partner of major league baseball and i'm sure there will be a cool over under of just how many home runs are going to be hit in tampa as the braves get set to take on the Rays for a three-game series that Jarvis and I are going to preview tomorrow because we're talking about the two teams who've gone back and forth pretty much this entire season on who had the best record in baseball. Now, a team that didn't go back and forth the first two seasons under Arthur Smith, they actually trended up for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. And now you feel like with all of the off-season acquisitions, how well they did in the draft, the fact that this is Arthur Smith's third year and many of those players, it's their third year being under the system – they are actually prying to get in the playoffs because remember they've had mathematical chances both seasons as crazy as that probably sounds. Now they really are set up for success. And when we say success, we mean post season success. So writer Frank Schwab on Yahoo sports he wrote an article about the Falcons embracing their first, their run first approach with Bijan Robinson. And that mm -hmm. was kind of the in indicator, right? You've got Tyler right. Algier, you've got Cordero Patterson, but you go out and get Bijan Robinson in the first round. And so right. that's basically saying, hey, we have a commitment. We know we were top five, but we actually want to be number one. And we will be unapologetic about the commitment that we have to the run game. Run it right into a postseason berth, hopefully. But the interesting thing is this. And the reason I'm thinking of framing it this way, Jarvis, is because as we told our audience, this is list season, right? Who's yeah. going to be the team, the top five teams to turn it around and get in the playoffs for the first time in three, four, five years? Mm -hmm. Which team is going to end up 
with uh, you know a winning record, a losing record. We could go on and on. Arthur Smith, is he a top 20 or top 10 football coach or is he a, what did they say? Bottom six, whatever. Yeah, yeah. bottom of the league, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not even being a homer. Like, no, that's actually just disrespectful and you didn't do your homework. But yeah, this report also kind of gave some off-season grades that I thought were interesting, gave pretty much an A, A minus to what the Falcons were able to do in the off-season as far as particularly the defensive players, right? And right. he does feel like, hey, if the Falcons have a lot of belief in Desmond Ritter, then okay, we could go for that. It's certainly an elevation over what they had last year, Marcus Mariota. But here's the question. The article tends to focus around whether or not the Falcons get to the postseason, and if that's predicated primarily almost only on the run game. But I would venture to say, hey, can Arthur Smith's run first offense get them in the playoffs? And do you see a scenario where the Falcons get there without the run game leading the way? Um, first of all, first part of your question, yes. I think they can get there um, with the run, run game being the primary focus because here's why. Like, like the, the success of offenses in the NFL, I think that people are predicate that on them throwing the football 35, 40 times in the game. And I just don't buy into that. Like, okay, you can throw some numbers at me and say how, oh, hey, this works and all that stuff. I, okay, cool. But, like, the run game helps everybody. It helps the quarterback. It helps the defense, you know, and I'll explain that a little bit later too as well. And then we have guys like Kyle Pitts and Drake London who are mm -hmm. tall guys, guys who can, you know, um, you can throw some 50-50 balls up and then more than likely those guys are going to come down with the rock. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, I understand what Arthur Smith is trying to do. So here's how that thing's supposed to work, right? Like you run the ball successfully. You're getting four or five yards a pop. And then on third down, and when you want to take a shot down the field or, or a six, a seven play drive, the long drive down the field, you're going to take your shots and you're going to hit those shot plays. That's where the, the Falcons um, faltered last year. Those shot plays were awful. Marcus Mariota missed horribly down throwing the football down the field. Desmond Ritter, not so much. The guy has, he has a good connection with, with, with the deep ball. You saw those connections when he got onto the field for those last four games, specifically right. with Drake London. So I understand Giving him a full offseason as the guy going into this season right here, I really feel like they're going to be able to establish themselves in the run game, work off their play action. The defense is going to be rested and because they're going to have these long sustaining drives. They're going to be able to throw multiple weapons at guys and be able to stay on the field for a long periods of time. That helps. That helps the defensive side and it also helps the opposing it hinders the opposing offense because you can't get on the field. Yes. So if you can throw the ball around the yard 35, 40 times, it doesn't really matter if you're not on the field. So I think that Arthur Smith's game plan to get him to the offense, I mean, to get him to, to the playoffs, definitely, 100%. I really feel like they can do that if everything goes like it's supposed to. But when you're talking about them getting on that solely, though, I really feel like, that depends on Desmond Ritter. That, that's when I feel like it falls in, on, on Desmond Ritter's shoulders. Because if he's able to not only hit those shot plays and then be able to work it, you know, and then be able to be really super successful and, and use Kyle Pitts in that red zone T, yeah. that's the only way I feel like they can get there if their run game is, you know, faltering or it's not as good as it was last year. Mm -hmm. If a Desmond Ritter is able to make certain throws when things in those tight windows, when things get really tight down there in the red zone and be able to utilize Kyle Pitts and Drake London together once they get down there. I think that's the only way I feel like they'll be able to be successful with the, uh, uh, let's just say an average running game. Yeah. And I think that's important to kind of point out because yes, unequivocally, we believe that a run first offense can get the Falcons to the playoffs because remember they didn't have Bijan Robinson last year and they still landed top five and still had math mathematical chances both the last two seasons to get into the playoffs and they were run heavy both seasons it was just obvious last year that they had to right, yeah. had to go that route so yeah if you have a top tier running back like Bijan to add to the running back room there's no reason why at a minimum you're getting to the playoffs but I also would say this in agreement with what you're saying there's this myth that, oh my goodness, you know, it's got to be pass heavy, pass heavy. Well, if you look at what the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles were able to do, they both had 
serviceable running backs, but running backs who could get them big yards, chunks when needed, right? So mm -hmm. you've got to have some type of balance. And that is where Desmond Ritter comes in because I see a scenario where the Falcons do get there with the running game, even just being solid. Like, I don't think they necessarily have to be one, two, or three in the league. I think if they're right. top 10, leaning maybe more to the five, six, seven spot, if you will, that actually might not be bad because if they're fifth in the league, maybe sixth or seventh, to me, Jarvis, that signals that Desmond Ritter is having a good year. Right. That's it exactly. because that means that you're not forced to your point to be in a situation where it could be third and three, you know, third and five. And you're like, no, we still have to run it. No, you got Desmond Ritter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Third and five is quite fine. He'll get you that yeah. and then some, right? So I mm -hmm. think that's why I see scenarios where this does not have to be the best running core or, or the, have the, you know, the best run offense of all time. I, I don't think that's necessary. I think the other piece that you mentioned is this. If you can have a mix, even if it's a 60-40 mix with run 60 past 40, that's still going to get you, in most instances, ahead of the sticks and ahead of that other team as far as time of possession goes. And I think yeah. that's critical. And then finally, we saw some really, really great strides season after season now in this third season with special teams, right? And really, yes. really flipping the field. Huge. And yep. I think we don't talk enough about yeah. special fields, uh, special teams. Young Way Koo being money on just about every field goal, always keeping the Falcons in the game or putting them ahead in tight games yeah. and also having the likes of it. I know they don't have Avery Williams this time, but having the likes of Cordero Patterson who said, hey, I'm, I'm going to be um, running the ball back. I'm going to be, you know, for kickoff returns, right? He said he was going to be doing that this season. I don't doubt that they might find ways to maybe be a little creative with some other players as well, uh, even from the running back room. But my point being, it's going to take all three phases of the game for them to be successful, not just to get into the playoffs, but maybe even win a playoff game. So I, for one, don't think that it's necessary that they have to be this lights out running back core just mm. to, to be successful. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's what Arthur Smith mean, means by when he says balance, he wants it to yes. be more balanced. You know what I mean? When you talk about balance, not necessarily how many times I run the ball, how many times I pass the ball It's all about, how successful I am when I do pass the ball versus yes. how successful I am when I run the football. You know what I mean? Like if he can be more efficient than he was last year, run the football, but not run the ball as much. Yes. He'll take that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And if he it's like, it's not going to be hard to be more efficient passing the ball <laughs> in passing situations. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? When you think about that, those things even themselves out just by a better, simply having a better quarterback in there, I feel, you know, as far as throwing the rock, like this is this is something that can be end up being pretty special by the time the end of the season rolls around. And I think that, you know, a lot the national media is going to be very slow to jump on board. T, but but, you know, how I feel about it offensively. I really feel like this thing can get really get rolling if everything rolls or goes correctly. I think as well. And this, of course, one of the national writers and we had one a couple of days ago that we talked about as well. They actually do feel like the Falcons have something that they can build on and like have, and he actually talked about it. Like he went into detail about yeah. the defense and what these new additions to the defense will be able to do. And so, you know, we talked about here how the offense can set up the defense to be able to put another team in a situation where it's like, okay, the defense can come for your quarterback because we put you, you know, on your heels, but I also feel like the defense can do their thing. Right. And yep. get a there, get some three and outs there, and then give Desmond Ritter something to really work with. So I think it can actually go both ways, and I think it will go both ways. And Falcons fans will be pleasantly surprised this season. But what do you guys think? Do you guys see a situation or a scenario where if the Falcons are more balanced, maybe like a 60-40 or even a 65-35, 65 run, 35 pass, or even 60, 40, can they be successful? Or do you feel like it really has to be a 70, 30, 80, 20 situation on offense run versus pass for them to be successful? Let us know, drop some comments in the chat on YouTube. And of course, don't forget to tell everybody about ATL day ones and tell them where they can download it wherever they download their podcasts. But see, this is for the culture. It is the intersection between sports, entertainment, the culture, and sometimes whatever the hell we want to talk about. Because that's just how we get down on this show. Today is no different. 
T, when you think about all of the, the escapades of people being out in the, in the news and, you know, Zion Williams, it comes to my mind, right? You know, escapades with women, money, child support, babies, all that stuff. You know what? I'm a man, Anthony Edwards, Ant man, he ain't having none of that because, you know, he just got a new contract, 260 mil. We just talk about five years. DeJounte Murray getting that money. Well, Anthony Edwards already got his bread, and he said he put a little video out there saying, "You know what? Ain't none of y'all women, y'all better back up because ain't nobody benefiting from this except for my girlfriend." Then kind of panned over his camera yes. to his girl. You know, saying so had a little puppy down there too. You know, say right. maybe be able to get the little song too, pup. You know what I'm saying? I just thought it was just a cool video. And man, out here saying, "You know what? I'm not about to get caught up." And all these uh these gossip websites and yes. women coming out here, you know, talking bad about me. So yeah, shout out to Ant Man for you know, I am standing up saying ain't nobody gonna benefit but me and my girl. I, yeah. I like but you that. know what that's from, right? That's from having the right circle around you. Yes, One of my good friends that's talked right. about that because mm -hmm. she knows their, their family very well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they decided to do, little things, little subtle things, his uncle relocated to Minneapolis and said, Hey, we're gonna build a life here right? right he's not trying to come to atlanta i mean i know we wanted him to but just as an example like he's not trying to get out of minnesota he's actually trying to build something and actually trying to contribute to that community again that's because of the circle that is around him and little things also changed his phone number why because i don't need all you scrubs and all you hangers on to get at me i'm focused i've got something to do here i came to do work this is business. And so I think that's the critical component. It really, one of the things that has always made me question Zion Williamson since we, since all of this broke out is where are your people? Like, yeah. where's your one person, whether that's, that's auntie purple. or uncle, mom or dad, best friend, where is that one person who can literally say, bruh, what is wrong with you? Don't you yeah. see everything that you potentially are giving away endorsement money uh, that that good, clean, you know, wholesome reputation that he had established. You need someone around that because guess what, Jarvis? You make a great point. Anthony Edwards is twenty one. We have heard about Anthony Edwards since junior high school, yeah, and yet have not Easy. heard any negativity about this kid because okay. of the people who he he surrounded himself with, and that his uncles and and that village have literally insulated him, still letting him grow and kind of do his thing. Don't get me wrong, because, you know, I interviewed him a couple of years ago yeah. at All Star, and he is a hoot. He, I mean, he's oh. just got so much personality. Come on now, on T. Ten. Come on now. <laughs> on he is Atlanta, as they say, like all day. All but day. I still like the fact that he's got the right people around him, and I think that's why we're not going to have a sob story two, three, five years from now about where did Anthony Edwards' $260 million go. I don't think that's happening with him. Yeah, yeah. When you're talking about him establishing the organization about what he wants to get into, he was in the movie Hustle with um Adam yeah. Sandler, which is I think is a pretty doggone good movie. You should check him out. He was great yeah, in that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So just uh he just playing an antagonist, you know, a basketball player, which I'm sure he he had uh, some good experience in. So yeah, I think that and I, I see nothing but good things for as far as the Ant Man goes. Now, T, before we get out of here, we got to talk about this now. Okay. Now, you know, today is National <laughs> Fried Chicken Day. And, uh, you know, there's a special place in my heart, you know what I'm saying, for Popeyes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to you. you if you mess with Popeyes as well, um, you know, go and get a two-piece spicy for you. But, you know, you know, in honor of National Fried Chicken Day. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, go ahead and do that. And, you know, look, I love a good Popeyes, but we both know that Jarvis, if you're going to tell our ATL day one, or if you're going to tell our everydayers to go get Popeyes chicken, you have to, you can't just say that. Like, you have to tell them which locations, because all Popeyes oh, are yes, not created the same. <laughs> They're not at all. No, so, Don't yeah. go to the one on uh, Western Chapel. Sorry. Um, no. Stay away from yes. the one on Western Chapel, because, yes. you know, you don't know what time they're going to close. Like, yeah. you may pull up yeah. at 9 30. We close. We ain't got no more chicken. We don't have okay. any more, no more chicken, no more honey, no more condiments, no more. We got drink, no biscuits. Nothing. We got no sweet, never got no sweet tea. Oh, like, ever. Sweet like, tea. ever. I don't However, sweet tea no if more. you pull up on that one on Memorial Drive right there near um, was that Rainbow Drive or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like that uh -huh. that side of Decatur. Yeah, that side. That Popeyes, that's your friends. Go there, get your chicken today. If you so choose. <laughs>
Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk more with you guys tomorrow. Obviously, the Braves have their last series before the All-Star break, and it is a big one. So we will preview that. If there's any more developmenting uh, or developing around the DeJounte Murray story, we'll bring you that as well. And anything else happening in the ATL, we got you. So every day is be safe in those streets because, my God, it is hotter than her in church. Okay, have a good day. You make sure you share love, show love, and most importantly, even to the hers, spread love.